Good evening, everyone. I'd like to call to order the Woodstock Planning and Zoning Commission special meeting Thursday, October 12, 2023. Thank you, everyone, for coming. He says, with us on Zoom, so <clears throat> I'll go for the roll call. Dr. Gordon used to have this all out. <laughs> I guess I can do it. <clears throat> I'll just start. Dwight, would you mind starting? Sure. Dwight Reinowitz, Tim Young, Mark Blackmer, Joseph Adaletta, Douglas Porter, Jeff Marcotte, Joe Palula, Sid Blodgett. Thank you, Sid. Um, here's we need some alternates. Oh, we need all of them. So. Doug and Dwight. See you both. Thank you. Pledge of Allegiance, please. Thank you. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic for its supreme, one nation, under God, Thank you, everyone. Um, the chair report. Again, I don't have a whole lot to uh, report as usual. I, I would uh, like to thank commissioners and staff and public for helping us through this, what we do weekly and monthly. Um, I'd also like to Thank Dr. Gordon. He's not here. I was hoping that uh, one of these times he would come to the meetings and he could hear me thank him. But he wanted to step down as chair sooner. Some of you know, some of you don't know. I was sick in the spring. And about the time he was really ready to step away, I was going to step up. My mom got sick. And he uh, said, well, you have a lot on your plate, and so why don't you just uh, stay doing what you're doing, and I'll phase the chair, and then it would cause some complications for him with his uh, Senate duties, and uh, I want to thank him for helping me uh, in a tough time, but the good thing is my wife is better and you know, in a better place. So just want to throw that out there. Thank you for helping me and helping us. Uh, that brings us to citizen comments. Are there any comments from anyone not related to anything that's on the agenda tonight? I'll speak about. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Jessica Weaver Boose. I live at 324 169, but I am here tonight representing the Economic Development Committee, of which I am the chair. Uh, I just want to plant a seed to the board here. Um, we're really working, we've been doing some outreach to Woodstock. Business Association, we have sent out a survey and gotten a decent number of responses. Um, and we want to connect also with y'all because there are some of the frustrations that businesses in town are feeling are based around zoning and just working with the zoning board. So um, we are doing some work on our side to Try to figure out how to meet their needs and how to reach out to y'all in a comprehensive way. And then I'm give you a heads up. So thank you. Well, thank you. Uh, appreciate your comment. And I, for one, 
welcome any input that you might have. Speaking on behalf of the group, feel the same way. So thank you. Here's we have some meeting minutes to approve. And of item four. Two sets in there, but it appears to me they're both the same. Both the same meeting. So, minutes. From Thursday, September 23rd. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, I wasn't here on the 21st. However, I was here uh, when the proposal was put in for the three lot subdivision under the new business. And uh, in the minutes you got, that request was denied. I think we need to specify it was denied by the Water Pollution Control uh, Commission. Not by us. Mm -hmm. That's their own rule of not hooking up to the existing infrastructure. I think when the engineer came in, he even said initially he was told by him that it was by one of the people on the board that they could hook up. And then later on, when the entire board met, they said no. Because they've got this rule that says if you can put an on site system in, that you would do that first before you would hook up to the line. I, I disagree with that. But they're the ones that rejected the hook up. Sounds like a good point to clarify it in the minutes. The WPCA tonight. Still need a motion in a second. That is pacing on the range. Make motion to accept the minutes. Um, then we'll go into discussion. I'll second that. Thank you. Guys. Motion by Jim Riley. Second by Doug Walker. Is there any discussion? How about adding what uh, Joe Palula <laughs> suggested? Uh, denial would by the WPCA uh, under new business. So after the WPCA denied, I believe that application was then withdrawn. I don't think this commission made a decision. Do you want to put that as a comment? That the plan was withdrawn as well. Yes, I think it makes it correct. Is that okay with you, Joe? Sure. Help. Second. Any other discussions? Hearing none on this as well. Wait. I'm going to abstain, abstain as I was not present in that meeting. Tim Young? I'm going to abstain as well as I was not present. Mark Black? I'm going to abstain as well. I was not present at that meeting. <laughs> I'm going to join the global one. I was there and I'll say yes. <laughs> <laughs> now the minutes are okay. Tom Porter, yes. Sid? Hi. I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> I believe that passed. Oh, one more. Yeah, Joe over there. Joe, I'm sorry. Well, I wasn't at the meeting, so I, I agree. Heard. I agree with the amendment. 
but I have to, I guess I have to abstain on the whole minute. Okay, so we'll fix up the, the minutes. You're going to take care of that, too? So I'm going to take care of it. No, I have not Okay. And we'll, um, I guess, bring those up again with that note. Was Sid, uh, he was in? Yes. Okay. Okay. So it was John and that I yeah. said it tonight. Thank you. And Doug. And Doug. And Doug. Thank, you. Thank you. We need to open the reopen the public hearing. <clears throat> <My cannabis. clears throat> this is a continuation of the public hearing. Continuation. We need to continue the public hearing from the last meeting regarding cannabis. Like real. Public hearing and open it up to commissioners for any discussion. Do you need a motion to open up the Yeah. No, I'm not going to do that. We never had, I just thought it was odd that we. Well, I'll take it if I can. Aren't we continuing it? We're continuing it. Oh, yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. Move that we uh, open the public hearing or continue the public hearing on the code zoning regulation text amendment. I'll second. Uh, <clears throat> can I direct <clears throat> to reopen the continuation of the public hearing second by Mark Black? Now we'll turn up to for discussion. You need to take we didn't vote on it yet. <laughs> Get ahead of myself. So I'll go through the roll. Right? Aye. 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 I'm going to abstain. So that passes. <laughs> so now we can open it to the committee. So I comment. So I have a draft of the regulation. And aside from the remaining issues to be addressed, I have it showing the way it would be if you do approve it as presented. Not saying that you have to do that. You can still go back to the red line version. You can still make changes because we're still in the public hearing. But if you wanted to see what it would look like without all the red, I made this version. And then we have those two remaining issues. I don't know if you want to start at the top or just go down to the remaining issues. I suggest we just go to the remaining issue. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Well, the public has, once we look at those, the public has any comments? So there was a discussion on the buffer. The commission had proposed the one that's very complicated. And then there was a discussion of um, the top one. And the attorney thought they were, it was too complicated. So I tried to take the best of both of them and made the third option, which is shorter. So the third option is at the bottom of the screen. And if you want to discuss it, you can choose which one you want. So I can read the new proposal if you want while you're reading what you have in front of you. For the proposed cannabis establishment use about a residential use, a buffer strip at least 25 feet wide containing planted or existing screening is required. 
Buffer may consist of new or existing coniferous trees, shrubs, wooden fences, stone walls, and similar landscaping features to a minimum six foot height with vegetation allowed to go higher. That's what I propose as a simpler version of the above two options. So I'm proposing you choose one of them and then I'll strike the other two. I thought that the third one looked good, um, except there's no description about the length of the buffer. Uh, so I was suggesting some language like length of buffer strip to be determined by site conditions, but no less than 100 linear feet. Shouldn't it be based on the length of the property? Well, what if the, that's, yeah, how the that's how the other description got so complicated. But you're right, the length need some beginning and end. Uh, I didn't know if just saying determined by site conditions or the, would help because if there's no house or neighbor next to the property, it may not have to be a long buffer strip. It only says when it abuts a residential use, if the property is vacant, I would don't think that's residential use. Okay. But if it's uh, a developable property or Single family residence. Anyway, uh, there's no length description. I think we need to have some description, even if it's a minimum of 75 feet, 100 feet. Whatever. It could be Whatever. adjacent to the length of the of the cannabis use establishment. Yeah. Yeah. Equal to the length of the cannabis establishment. Just the building or the property from the like the street to maybe I agree with we don't want it too complicated, but uh, I'll make sure it's long enough to be effective. Three hundred foot property line and yeah, and a hundred and fifty foot long building, it's like you'd have to have one hundred foot buffer that's not covering things. Right, right. So it's twenty four feet. Yeah. So that's a good point. You know, yeah. So it could, you know, come right there, sort of, you know, you can see it. You just, as soon as you go to the end of it, you see the establishment mm -hmm. point that be before and after the establishment. Mm -hmm. That sounds good. It's tasted it's already there. Yeah. They yeah. don't have to clear it at all. Are you getting all that? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Kind of it's simpler, right? Yeah. Sidebar to the chart. Oh, yeah. You had the PDF open before. It wasn't working. <laughs> okay, I think I closed out of the meeting. <laughs> One moment, please. No, you're still there. It's not showing up. Okay, we went back and did So it says where the proposed cannabis establishment use about a residential use of buffer strip at least 25 feet wide containing planted or existing screen is required. You want to add for the length of cannabis on either end. The cannabis establishment. Okay. Good. Improvements needed. Improvements. Improvements. Cannabis improvements. Or just say improvements. Okay. Decided improvements. Decided. Okay. All right. 
because if they have a dumpster, you want to make sure that that's screened right. for the adjacent property. Okay. And I would think you want to be part of the problem too, which would be part of the The only question I have is do we say as uh, shown on the site plan so it's clear right. that it's, it's on that site plan so that the commission will get an opportunity to say what it's happening. So this is what I have. We can change it if you'd like. It says a buffer strip at least 25 feet wide containing planning or existing screen is required with the length being a minimum equal to the length of the cannabis establishment, including the parking lot and dumpsters as shown on the site plan. So then we will strike out the above two options. How does all of that sound to the CEO? They're not here. Is it? You've met Cameron, right? Yeah. Cameron Jane. He works at I'm sorry, I thought you were the uh, mm -hmm. sorry, Joe. He was um Cameron was introduced he to a couple meetings ago when we were in Spain. <laughs> That's why I did him during the hiatus. <laughs> I didn't zoom into that meeting. So should we move on to the next remaining topic? Yes, please. So you had a question about exclusions for cannabis establishments, include but are not limited to non-cannabis food or beverages, mm -hmm. cannabis themed non-food items such clothing apparel. And I think I don't know if I wrote that wrong. Did I write that wrong? I think that's what we had before. You can see it on the screen, which of course it doesn't show up very well when you try to fix that. That's not very well, but anyway, that's what was there before, the yep. top yellow highlight. And I'm for the attorney's direction. I believe he recommended that we move that somewhere else. Oh, move we'll it somewhere else, okay. And I think I moved that. Give you a copy of the um the red line draft, right? You can compare yes, it. Yeah. We had it up had it in the first place, but then yeah, so it used to be in the definition. He was saying it should not be in the definition. So that's why I made it yellow because we I just moved it, I didn't change it. That looks okay. I think I should add the as. So it, it now says exclusions for cannabis establishments include but are not limited to non cannabis food or beverages or cannabis themed non food items such as clothing, oh. apparel, etc. Everybody like that? Yes, yes. Oh, that was my wife calling. Go. 
Yeah, what I want. That's my wife. When it rings all night. Mm -hmm. it's all. A lullaby. Yeah. And then we had a question about restricting the use of it on a mixed use property. And so I am suggesting we strike out what we had there before, which is in the yellow with the strikeout. And then we're proposing the red, gold, red text that's immediately following that. It says cannabis consumption shall not be permitted in any building or structure that is used as a cannabis establishment. In the case of a mixed use or multi tenant property, cannabis consumption cannot be permitted in the portion of the premises that is used as a cannabis establishment or immediately outside such portion. Meaning that if it's on a mixed use property and the rest of the property has a residential use, the people who live in the home could use it when they're not in the business. Does that make sense? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I can't get the yellow to go away. I'll fix that later. <clears throat> so I think that was the remaining issues. If everybody likes the rest of it, then if you want to, there's anything else to discuss, you could do that before you conclude. <laughs> Uh, no, I'm all set. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any members of the public who'd like to speak? Hearing none. I'll make a motion that we close the public hearing. Second. Motion to close the public hearing by Doug Ford, seconded by Mark Blackburn. Close the roll. Mike Ryan? Aye. 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 Mark Aye. Aye. Reporter. Aye. Aye. Joe Blewett. Sid. Aye. Staying in that soon passes. Public hearing is closed. Twenty six two. Agenda item. Five. Full business. Item A is proposed zoning regulation sex amendment to replace current temporary and limited moratorium on cannabis establishment in the town of East Side. So on the subject of the cannabis? Yeah, food zoning regulation. Text that I replace. If I read the wrong, wrong line, I apologize. Replace current and temporary women moratorium on cannabis establishments in town of this side. Zoning regulations are Article 3. Uh, I need that uh, 2. I can use BA 4 and replace with new regulations in Articles 2, 3, and 4. Open that up to discussion. I'll make a motion that we approve the new regulation for the cannabis and submit it. Motion to accept approve the new regu regulations that were submitted by Doug Porter, seconded by Joe Avalon. Is there any discussion on the matter? Hearing none of those rules. Wade Reinowitz. Aye. Tim Young. Aye. Mark Blackman. Aye. Joe Adletta. Aye. Doug Porter. Aye. Did Blyder. Aye. Joe Porter. Aye. I will abstain on that. So passes. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you, Jerry. Although I do like the clean copy better at the end. <laughs> <laughs> it is uh, certainly a good thing to get done. Um, 
brings us up to uh, item B of old business, which is draft, draft text amendment and zoning regulations. Work term now. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So everyone on the commission has a copy of the memo that I wrote. I apologize for the delay. When I was thinking of this meeting, I realized I would not be here Thursday and Friday of last week, but I forgot I wouldn't also be here on Monday. So I was a little late in sending it to you. They should have it in front of you. <clears throat> Dated October 11th, and it says proposed short term rental discussion. I'm suggesting we have a new approach to doing text amendments where we start out with identifying the problems that you want to address. If they are problems in the community that are the purview of zoning or subdivision, depending on the regulations you're trying to amend. And or the problems with the regulations themselves and then proceed from there. So I think we spent a lot of time so far talking about regulations we found from other towns, but I think that's separate from Woodstock. I think we should come back to Woodstock and figure out what are you trying to address here? And that will give you guidance on what to do about the regulations moving forward. Do you have any thoughts? Okay. I'll, I'll start. Uh, okay. uh, I think it was initially brought to our attention because of an issue out on Bungie, uh, Bungie Lake, uh, with an Airbnb uh, rental property. Uh, but in uh, listening to that concern raised during that meeting and our subsequent uh, meetings going over different towns regulations, uh, I think it is uh, apparent that uh, there is a topic to address in our regulations about uh, short-term rental. Our regulations do have description and a uh, rule for bed and breakfast, uh, which are appropriate, but the environment has changed significantly to uh, what were bed and breakfast or that type of short-term rental where Typically, the owner of the property stayed and lived at the property, had a few guests uh, use the beds, and uh, they serve breakfast, uh, hence the name. Uh, <clears throat> with a, a lot more development in the short term rental global market with Airbnb, uh, it's, I think, important that we look at how that might impact Woodstock. Because it's larger corporations uh, purchasing properties and turning uh, the buildings into revenue generators for the business, oftentimes with uh, this, the homeowner or property owner not on site. Uh, and I'm not saying that's existing in Woodstock yet, but that's where uh, the market is in general. And it sounds like there may be some sites in Woodstock that are on an Airbnb type uh, register. So people who open up an Airbnb website and look for short-term rentals in Woodstock can, can find locations. And I think it's uh, it's time for us to continue to look at how to uh, address how short-term rentals are identified and used in Woodstock. Thank you, Joe. 
Anyone else? I um uh, <clears throat> I've been up to Lake Placid, and they're having a real problem with their schools up there because uh, they have so many short-term rentals uh, that are owned by corporations. And their school population is taking a dive because families aren't buying these houses. Corporations are. And they're being rented out for the whole year. So it does have an effect in areas that are um, very popular for tourism. I just got back from. Uh, uh, the San Juan Mountains or the San Juan Islands up in Washington State. And the same thing. Corporations are buying up a lot of the houses and the school population is taking the down. So if we have areas within the town that are very popular for tourism, I think those those areas need to be targeted. I don't see a lot of people coming to most of Woodstock, but some people may be coming to the Lake District. And I know the Lake Districts can make their own rules more, I guess, more restrictive than we can. But it, but it can be a problem. So that's the way I see Woodstock. Thank you, Joe. Anyone else? I, I just oh. want to add, I'm not opposed to them. I just think that they have to be uh, seen and understood and somehow identified within the town to uh, ensure that there are no problems that develop from uh, overutilization of a building or site uh, that cause problems for neighbors. Mm -hmm. So it's just, uh, again, not uh, denying any use of short-term rentals by just being careful about their development. Sorry, Sid, for interrupting. I agree. I agree with that. Um, I think that that's what really pushed some of the issues that have been brought to our attention. Uh, is, uh, some of the people that have rented these places and how does the owner, whether it be a corporation or a resident, um, handle that situation? Sid? Thanks. Uh, Lulak, I, sorry, I didn't quite understand your point when you mentioned schools are taking a dive. Does that mean student body population is declining and the tax base is the same, whether it's a corporation or a family paying the property taxes? To me, that kind of sounds like a benefit, but maybe I, I didn't get your point, perhaps. Uh, the, the point was the school population, the student population is taking a dive because you no longer have the families there with children. You don't have the permanent family with with two or three kids because it's owned by a corporation and it's being rented. Yeah, the tax base is the same, but you don't have the school population. It's a good thing, right? Smaller classes, fewer kids, more direct interaction with the teachers. Depends on how you look at it. Is it a good thing that you don't have soccer? You don't have uh, little league baseball? You don't have basketball? You don't have Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts, 4-H? Is that a good thing? I don't know. just like to add that the size of families are typically much smaller now anyway. The average family, I don't know what the average family size is, but it's much smaller than it has been in the past. So there's very few families that even have three kids. So that's kind of separate from the short-term rental issue. But I understand what you're saying that in a heavily touristy popular area, you may have 
those properties of competing a single family for what they could afford to pay. I'm not sure Woodstock really compares to Lake Placid, but um, I see what you're saying. I just like from what I heard from the people coming in to talk to us. Uh, there is some, you want to say the corporations coming in buying houses, but right now, especially in Woodstock, it's a lot of private homeowners that are doing it. It is for more income, but it's, uh, you know, it is, it's, and they've got the room to do it. So we aren't necessarily facing the big corporations doing it. We are dealing with our, our residents. I just want to say that this, uh, you know, this approach there it, it is brought up. I think it's an excellent way to start. And uh, this, I hate to say this, but you headed down the same road as the uh, cannabis when we decide to uh, look at what other towns have done and then try to inject the, uh, uh, the problems that we are seeing attention and start to use it together with what's going to work for our community with you know with the idea that um you know to protect us against the, the big onslaught if it were to ever happen but you know I, I don't think we're at that level yet but it's more of a private thing there's a lot of other factors here you know there's still in you start to get these uh one family homes that all of a sudden have become a two family home uh, because of what they're doing and of the subjects that you can take it. There's a lot of other things to be considered here on the Thank you. So I'm not sure what I understand how can someone turn their home into a two family home? Because what's that doesn't allow two family homes. If they're considered multi family you need ten acres and you Special permit and all with an Airbnb. If you've got something you you pay to rent your lower level out, or you go move to the lower level and give somebody the upper level. If you're just renting a room out in your house, that's but is that what some of the problems that we had heard about they were doing up? I don't think that makes it a two family though. Two family is two separate living units. Yeah. Sounded like they were, yes, they weren't a two family home, but they had a visiting family and a, and a, and a living family. It may be, I just don't understand how that's different than a bed and breakfast. Right, which was allowed to for bed and breakfast. They may not have been, and I haven't been the zoning officer for quite a while, so I don't know how that's been handled, but. Moving forward, we're talking about how they could or should be regulated moving forward. Right. Right. Yeah. Uh, what did what we have faced what we're faced with now, some things we can't change, but you know how we're going to Cannabis mobile is going to turn. Thanks, Tim. You see? Uh, thanks. Uh, the upper section of Delia's memo from yesterday has some pointed, there's some, you know, key points. Like, is there a problem and what's not working well? And aside from some complaints that we received from uh, the late residents, uh, I don't really know if there is a problem. I I don't see corporations coming in buying up houses, except for a few reports of some larger groups, some noisy neighbors out on the lake. Uh, I'm just wondering if we're kind of going down a path that isn't really necessary. Not that we want to be behind the ball when there is a problem, but I don't know, maybe I'm, I'm missing the issue. It's very difficult to regulate noise. Um, we struggled with that in the past. And I think it's 
the uh, policing or enforcement's difficult no matter what we do. Sure. Well, I, Sid, I, I would comment that uh, we do have regulations for bed and breakfast, and, and that seems appropriate. I think we're getting into an area where uh, it's hard for a CEO to uh, identify when a property is different than a bed and breakfast versus a short-term rental where there's no property owner on site. And it doesn't have to be a corporation that owns property. It can be, as others have suggested, just a, a um, resident that either owns their, that property or a second, second house somewhere. And I'm only thinking that this is a, an issue that we have to help the CEO come up with definitions because I don't think the bed and breakfast regulations are sufficient to cover these other types of short-term rental. And anecdotally, there are places, houses that are rented uh, where the owner leaves and going to be out for a few months and they rent it for a few months and that's not really a bed and breakfast and it's uh i think it's important that we have some kind of information available to the ceo and residents to be able to identify how to make sure it's a, a safe environment to rent out to to uh, people so part of our i think public safety uh responsibilities are involved with this short-term rental that's not defined by bed and breakfast. And I have a question about your example. If someone owns the property and leaves for a few months and they rent it out to the same party for a few months, I don't know if someone even get involved in that. Like if someone moves to Florida and they rent Sorry. their yeah. house for the summer to someone else, like maybe it's the winter, whatever the season is. For the long-term rental. Right. So zoning doesn't get involved in that and making sure it's safe, that sounds like more like a building code concern. I don't know, don't know if the building code gets involved in that because we don't have an like an apartment inspection procedure like some other towns. Sometimes I don't know if it's annually or maybe whenever the, the tenancy changes, sometimes like in County, they require that the apartment be inspected. But I don't believe we have that here. And if we do, I'm not aware of it, but that wouldn't be a zoning thing anyway. That would probably be a building department. But I've never been zoning. Fireworks. The soft guns and smoke air fireworks. The fireworks. Didn't they know about it? If the fire marshal knows about the fact that there Perfect. are oh, oh, combined apartments. Right. Okay. Yeah. But that's not zoning. Right. <clears throat> I have a question. Is this something that the lake association can um, adjust their regulations to to deal with this issue? Does it have to come through um, the town zoning board, or can the lake? Since most of the issues seem to be at the lakes. I don't know the extent of what the lake association can do. I guess they would have to look into that from their own legal counsel. But we could ask them if they have. Um, I haven't heard that they have, but I'm not aware of what they are doing. The problem I have is uh, we're very good at writing regulations. Our book of regulations is spirit and thick. We're not great at enforcing. And I'm struggling to do more regulations until we figure out how we're going to enforce the ones that we have. We have no penalties in our regulations right now. Um, so if a, if a neighbor, we go out and we put these any regulation, and we put the regulation in for short term rental, and then the neighbor has a complaint because the property next door is not being taken care of and there's rowdy people. How is the town going to enforce that? We have no penalties. Um, so, yes, we can ask our zoning officer who goes out who's part time, um, hasn't done a tremendous job enforcing the season of fifth regulation, season of fifth orders that we already have. And that's not to complain about the zoning officer, but we're still difficulty enforcing those or getting compliance. Now we're going to have a person in town who says, well, we have these regulations. Why aren't, why aren't the town enforcing them? To me, that's the biggest thing. Before we get to this, I think we need to come back 
and address how we're going to enforce our regulation. And let's come up with uh, fines, penalties, legal fees, and get that into our regulation. And then, so that we have something to stand behind and say, okay, you're not in compliance. And then we can add that short-term rentals are an issue, then we have the teeth to go behind them and make sure that they stand. I recall a few years ago, uh, when Tina LaJoy was involved, uh, we didn't even know how many Airbnbs we have in town. And if any or any any of them or all of them were permitted, you know, for that use. So even trying to figure all that out is still something to tackle too. Well, I have a historical issue with it too. Um, my family lived on the lake. Uh, Lakes have changed tremendously in the last few years. They used to be mostly seasonal. Uh, and guess what? A lot of them were rented on short-term basis. Um, my mother's house was one of the few uh, permanent residents on um, Buggy. Um, but a lot of them were seasonal rentals. We just, but well, we didn't have this thing called Airbnb. We had the shopper's guide uh, to get a rental. Um, and it was more of a local thing. You knew a family and you say, hey, we'd like to... And I've just seen it because guess what? I'm the one that's carrying those cottages down and building the houses now that are long term, are permanent. Um, but there is a historical significance that these houses were rented on a regular basis. I think now we have it on a more uh, noticeable because we have their Airbnb, everyone hears about it. But they've been renting houses on lakes for short term rentals on the lakes for a long time. And I don't think it's created, I don't hear a lot of problems. Now, we may have individual problems, uh, but again, we don't have anything in our regulations that are going to help us deal with it. Mm -hmm. They can call the police. The police really, they're not quick to get out to a, a problem. Mm -hmm. They have a, one trooper for 200 square miles. Right. But I, I, I think to my point is to maybe we go back to the lakes. Lake districts and ask them, um, have they looked at changing their regulations to um, get that? Although that may be hard to do while you're on the lake. Do they make changes to their regulations on a regular basis? Uh, yeah. Have to get every every so often, the uh, uh, <clears throat> bylaws are reviewed and the deed and covenants, uh, they can be opened every so many years and added to or deleted. And, and uh, there are rules and regulations too, and they have been, you know, modified over the years. So it, it's definitely something that can be looked at. I appreciated Delia's comments because I, I get, think we get tied up with the verbiage of the regulations first, uh, and the idea to identify what the problem is if there is a problem. Um, so, and, and I think Delia's comments was as when she was the. Uh, zoning officer, you didn't have any complaints that you no. Can we ask our zoning officer what complaints have come in to the town in the last five years? It may be an immediate, it may be an issue that's just surfacing now. And let's just see what we have for information. But I do, I have health, health issue concerns, but I'm not sure how we can address it. And it, it primarily comes down to septic system. Yeah. And septic system. Why? Well, wells are usually related to the septic system. Right. Um, and the well's fine until the septic system breaks. Voted yep. 20 years ago. It's been added to. How many new that it was added to? A lot of them were cottages, right. and they didn't have much for, they had a cesspool or just a dog hole. Yeah. I own a building in East Woodstock that just had a 275 gallon oil tank. That was the septic system. I think a lot of them, at least on Bungie, have been upgraded. Quite a few engineering systems now. Uh, but still, there's the houses around that are waterfront that still have dug wells. You can really get the water from the lake. And I remember on drawdowns, you know, people, you know, saying they're running out of water. So it was an issue. 
and, and on long term rentals, I, I know of a uh, couple of places uh, on the long terms, there was never any issue, and the same families used to come up every year. Anyone from the public who would like to speak? I'll just make a quick comment, um, which is we do have tourists in Woodstock. We do have you know a lot of home businesses and smaller businesses, farm businesses that do rely on that incoming money to the town. Um, and we don't have a lot of short-term options. Um, so while I'm not surprised that this has quietly been growing in town, the whole Airbnb verbal thing. Um, I will also say that while listening just now, I did a quick search. It's kind of amusing what comes up as Woodstock because it's a very wide area that most of us would consider Woodstock. And um, on one of the apps, I was able to focus in and I got a, a more accurate listing of what looks like about 66 places. <laughs> So, but on the other app, I was not able to find more than three. And that was checking different dates and availabilities. So um, who knows really what, what the situation is. And I mean, I have the same concerns with what Joe's mentioned and um, what both Joe's have mentioned really, because um, I see it as a big problem with how it's wrecking the housing market. Um, it's driving, that's part of what's driving prices up, so that it's hard to have affordable housing, because when it's seen as affordable, it's really easy for somebody to pick it up for a second place to rent out and turn into a bad game kind of thing, versus it going to the people who need it. So, um, so yeah, it's a, it's something we've got to think about in both directions. So I appreciate the discussion. Thank you. Yes. Your statement for the record, please. Okay. Uh, Laura Curling. Thank you. Uh, 58 Public Rock Road and 29 Hiawatha Heights. Um, and some of the comments. Um, I was a former teacher, so I brought thoughts, right? <laughs> but I thought it helped explain a little bit about the communities. And with Airbnb, community is sort of being removed from. Um, from the thought of a lake community, whether it be at Fawcett, which is Lords or Lake Funny, and um, the dollar signs that kind of replace that community. And we do have regulations, you know, we have um, deed restrictions, we have covenants, uh, like I mentioned, um, we have many um, ways in which we try to. Uh, these good stewards of that reservoir of water um, for the past 55 or 60 years uh, once it was developed. And because Airbnb, which is the hottest topic, I guess, um, has allowed people that if they go away on vacation for two months, they're not going to rent it out for two months to one person. They're still on Airbnb. They have managers because they're not hosts that are on site, they're some unhosted. Um, and so because my family had bought the lot that we originally built our cottage on in 1959, um, so we, we've been in a long time. We've seen a lot of changes as, as you did say that, Mr. Porter. Um, and I'd like to see community back. And, um, I was there, my, my neighbor, my newest neighbor, um, is, um, a person that sees it as, you know, it's a nice place to live, but I'm going to, um, I'm going to go on Airbnb. I have property in LA and that's what I do out there. And I live in New York City and the pandemic put me out here in the country. I don't blame the person for wanting to come out of the country. In, in 2020, but now back in New York City, and her her property was on Airbnb about two or three weeks ago. We mentioned that there's not too many, but now it's off because someone's there. Massachusetts plates. I don't know who they are. 
And that was another thing about the community of the lake. You know, you walked down the street, you, were, you recognized cars, you recognized people, kind of watched out for one another. You know, um, when my neighbor first moved in, she was getting a lot of delivery. So I texted her and I said, Hey, I know you're going to be away a few days. You got a delivery. You want me to put it up on your porch so it's undercover? And she's like, Well, yeah, that's okay. Because that's what we did. You know, somebody's garbage can. So the community part, but there are a lot of people on the free community. And I, my map, which I, Bungie's here. Bungie's the largest. We have 400 and 416 homes around Lake Bungie. Now, along the water, there's about 125. I was counting along the way, and there's very few. I mean, I can remember when we built our cottage in the mid 60s, you could count about a dozen around the lake. And now it's just completely full. Um, so we, there are a lot of people on Bungie, which is woods has fewer than mm -hmm. woods. So, which is woods has 39 on the lake and 45 off lake, it looks like, um, from our map. Bungie has about 130 on the water, and um, I said 285, but I think there's going to be more. There's more property. I'm looking to Ron because she's our president. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, and then Wonset um, is is pretty small, but they too um, they have a hundred on the lake. 100 property owners and about 25 or 30 off the lake. Quasit's a little unique because they have town roads that are supporting most of their, they have East Quasit and West Quasit. Those are town roads, I don't know. Those are actually private. I think the town does plow two of them. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, so East Quasit and Quasit are private <clears throat> in that section. East Quasit and Quasit are town roads. E oh, East Quonset, yes. East and West. Yes. East Loyola West. and those other, what's the other? Yeah, the other ones that run off of that, like Loyola Drive and those, those are five. Right. Okay. Yeah. No, I'm not Thank you. two larger right. ones. Where? How did you forget this? <laughs> now you know where. <laughs> Bungie is primarily all private. You know, we're a private lake and private roads. So the, the width of the road, is an issue um, with more people coming on. And um, septic is a true issue. And the neighbors next door still have a shallow well. I mean, they're, they're seasonal to me and have been there from the time we had our cottage so it's in the 60s. But um, I, I just, as you're thinking about it, Every town in Connecticut, when you go online and you're looking to see, there are issues with short-term rentals, whether they be noise, and that's the big one. Um, you know, somebody rents it, and all of a sudden they invite friends, and now there's three people, or, you know, three parties of. So now you have maybe ten people at that house, and I know on. Um, I think Tim, you had mentioned that you know that was a two two family instead of because it's not classified as a two family, but they have people using you know the women um, that have that B and B you know, that Airbnb um, on Beaver Dam. It's a thirty five hundred square foot home um, and fourteen hundred feet. They classify it as an, um, just looking this up because I don't want to miss, miss this. Um, for their Airbnb, it's tranquility on the lake, the private lake that many property owners on the county would like to see it remain. And we've worked really hard for 60 years to keep it healthy. Um, and the lake itself, and it's not an easy job, and taking care of roads and everything else. So there's a lot more than just 
having somebody come in on a weekend and rent that that space. Um, but they call it an apartment. The person has a bedroom with a queen bed and a living space that has a couch that pulls out. So four people, even though there's one bedroom, four people can live there. And I don't know if children can come or not. The only thing that that particular home does is typically it's hosted by the owner. So it's a plus, but um, it, it's still, you know, you're, you're, you're providing a service. You're, you're a lodging place for someone. And you can say it's just passive income, which Airbnb says it is, but you're providing a service. And the other concern about safety is that when they are off that property, now they're in the lake. So our insurance is probably an issue. If they get hurt on the roads, it's an accident. The person who's, who's doing the Airbnb is a woman. And I don't know. I don't know if we can then say, okay, they damaged my property. Do I sue, do I sue them? I mean, how do I? So, uh, many, many towns are really just struggling with it, and and there's a lot of issues. It's not as simple. You know, it's, I've, I've used Airbnb. When I travel sometimes, it's easier, or you can't find it, or your family goes with you. It's, it is convenient for some things. Maybe this isn't the place that it should be. I can't speak for the other lakes, but Lake Bundy, I think is the largest of the three. We have a lot more people. And I I just I don't know. I get very emotional too. Thank you for coming and okay. expressing your view. Thank you. Anyone else would like to speak? Yes, um, my name is Ronnie Bates, and I live on 135 Laurel Hill Drive, Woodstock Valley. I have concerns about health and quality of life, which I know planning and zoning is, is entrusted with also. Because we're in such a densely populated area, I can have a neighbor who is eight feet off of my property line on, on either side. I can see practically five blocks on either side. Even if you have lovely guests who are coming and are well behaved, they may decide to sit out at night and chat and I have to go to work the next day. I don't really want to be listening to people chatting. Um, it will interfere with my quality of life. So Mr. I don't really want to work the next day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Porter's point, it used to be like second homes and vacation homes, but now the lake is, is becoming more residential. And some of the homes are, you know, they, they range from very small to actually million dollar homes now. So many people are living there full time. And we have to take into account the quality of life of the residents. Um, it, 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 I don't know if we want to open this Pandora's box here. Um, towns like Noank have had these issues and decided against Airbnb. New York City has just decided against Airbnb. I know at the last meeting, there was an attorney here, and he basically tried to put the fear of God in us and say that, you know, maybe this was against the Constitution or something. But there are probably enough, you know, so many lawyers that you couldn't shake a stick in New York City and not hit a lawyer, and yet they have banned the Airbnbs. So I think we have to take that into consideration and think of what's best for our community. And we have to think about quality of life, not just finances. There's more, more than money at stake here. And it, you know, if it does come down to money, there can be a mass exodus of people here and, and you know, change the whole community. Um, I happen to like having neighbors. I love my neighbors. We take care of each other. Um, if you start having transient neighbors, it's going to change your, your whole community. And it's gonna trickle down to the rest of the town. So those are my concerns. Thank you. Any other discussion? Thank you, everybody. That was uh, productive, I believe. And I'd like to move on to 
item number six on the agenda. And we have Zoning Enforcement Officer and Land Use Department. Robin Newton is no longer going to be a, a CEO and need to appoint Zoe Chatfield as an additional CEO. So, uh, is there any discussion on that? Or someone would like to make a motion to put a moving Zoe? Zoe? Motion by Tim Young, seconded by Mark Blackburn. Is there any discussion on this? Do we have any information about the background, training, and uh, it, it might be helpful for us to at least know a little bit about Zoe. Well, um, I want to be added to the new agenda next week and I can ask for information. Okay, uh, we revise the agenda. So, should we table this motion then? I, I'd like to know a little bit about Zoe. Uh, I have two things. For my one. question, my other question is, I think part of the issue we're having right in town is we don't have a regular DEO. Right. We need a historic, someone who has a historical perspective of what's going on, and we seem to be having a rolling DEO. So I'm not sure we need to, as a commission, and as a town, we need to address that. I don't say I don't think the money is I don't think the town is setting aside enough money to fill that position. And so we're having this issue where we're having a turnover and then we're not getting the enforcement of the weeks. I agree. Right. Okay. Okay. I I was just looking to see if um Dewey says no, so I didn't. What did I say no to? <laughs> <laughs> we haven't got any job. We got any scout. The scout did not. He just asked us to take Robin off and add this girl. Can't find him. I don't think it's going to make a tremendous difference. We are meeting again next week. I'd be willing to amend the, the motion to the table for next week if it can be changed on the agenda. Looks like it. So, a motion to table this is the next week by Tim Young, second by Mark Blackburn. Is there any discussion? Just to table it so that we can get more information. Yeah, no, no, just no one. Just no John and Mungo right now. Okay. 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 What? Is there any other discussion? Hearing none, what's the name? Wait. Hi. Tim Young. Hi. Mark Blackman. Hi. Can we add a letter? Hi. Doug Porter. Hi. Sid. Hi. Uh, now I will abstain and that's what passes. So we will uh, get some information on Zoe Zoe this week and have that sent to the commissioners and I'll take it up again next week. Um, in regards to getting more hours for CEO, is that something that we would have to address during budgetary time? I'm guessing yes. Jeff has had Jeff Gordon, Gordon has had multiple discussions. I don't know if there were discussions, but I know it's brought that up. So I lack of money or hours to, to be 
feel the force of the salary to be there. All the work needs to get done. So I'm not sure where we are at now, how much uh, we're actually paying. Or coverage that we have. So what I would uh, try to address that every day as well. Uh, next item is a review of the occupation prints. Just a little tweak. I mean, we'll still table this till see what John sends you for information. If we, uh, if you go on to Clay's website, it tells it's all all oh, very good. Like, so the information there. Perfect. Thank you. So we've got a week to read up on it then. <laughs> hey, Jeff. Yes, sir. I just want to reinforce what Tim was saying and your comment about ending it up with Jay and I think what Doug was pointing out is that we're not getting sufficient ZEO time or coverage in Woodstock. And uh, I don't think it's just a commission's issue, but residents are being impacted by lack of access at the town hall. And, uh, it doesn't reflect well, I think, on the town's capability. And, some permits and questions that applicants may have. Just to uh, reinforce any conversation you have with the first selectman to the selectman's office. Um, and, helpful. And, and, and I know they're they're well aware of it. Four or five years. Yeah. Well, we have to keep mentioning it. And in particular, we have an economic development commission that's been reactivated. Uh, we will likely have applicants, so hopefully we'll have applicants so that will have to come before PSB at some point. Um, be nice to be able to process things. The other point, you know, our discussion tonight, Airbnbs and other, uh, if we had a CEO here tonight, probably could have helped us and answer some of the questions that we have and that can be raised tonight. And then any of it's even enforceable. We will still talk tonight about enforcement. About meeting, we, we can't even meet the permit tonight. Clearly, it's a serious issue. I'm serious about it. Yeah, it's, it's uh, certainly unfortunate. We're at we're, we're where we are at with withdrawal. So I'm not aware of any uh, home occupation permits. Yeah. Would you like information about that? Okay. Uh, yes. Um, we covered it at the board of finance meeting. I believe it's about B30, it might be 32, but it's an increase of 25,000 for the year of the projected budget for the So they're already facing a $25,000 increase with the part time there. Just so you know. all honesty. How big it is with permitting, but reviewing permits does take quite a bit of time, and then enforcement takes even more for each individual enforcement issue, depending on how well someone works with the person in violation. Well, I'm not aware of any residential zones that are spotted with them. Just to agenda item seven. Or citizens' comments. If anyone has comments, and anything else that we haven't already discussed, willing to discuss. Hearing none, corresponding comfortable correspondence. I believe. F. C. Yep. Uh, yes. Sorry to be a minute or two late here, but 
just checking uh, that planning firm's website that we use. You know, Robin Newton is a CEO. Apparently, Zoe Chatfield is not. We can't hear you. You must have muted yourself. Sid, we can't hear you. We can't, Sid, we can't hear you. We can't hear you. <laughs> did, did he mute himself or did he, did he muted here? He muted himself. Can you oh, hear me now? We can't. Yeah. You, know, <laughs> you were saying a lot there, Sid. <laughs> My apologies. Anyway, I'm looking at this Teich, if that's the right pronunciation of this planning and policy group that we fired. Uh, currently, Miss Newton is a CEO. Zoe Chaffield apparently is not. The agenda seems to be wanting to add, not replace, but add Zoe Chaffield as, as a CEO. I guess, assuming that we're going to retain Robin Newton as well. But I just don't see those uh, credentials or initials in Ms. Chatfield's uh, write-up. Um, so I mean, either she needs to be one or we can say thanks, but no thanks. She's not qualified. I guess my, my other issue is, do these consultants, contractors really do enforcement work or are they mostly just planners. Again, kind of late in the night, but maybe we can bring this up in a future discussion. That's all. Thanks, Sid. Um, it, it does say in parentheses on the, on the agenda to replace Robin. And I, from the email communication I got, I, I half think that she's not involved with the firm anymore, that she quit. The, I, I don't know. That's the 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 drift I got. So um, but yeah, I'll ask for some credentials and get those to everybody and uh, we can make a decision next week, yay or nay. But but thank you. Thank you. New correspondence. Yeah, I'm aware of this morning. No, that's for next week. Well it's for next week. Never mind. Brings us to Jeff. I just want to point out what he was talking about. I was late in getting this written to get it done in time for the packet. This is the memo about something on next week's agenda. It's a memo dated today, October 12th. It's about what's about sustainable farms. I didn't get it in the packet in time, so that's why I'm handing it out tonight. And I also emailed it to you. But that'll be the packet for next week. Right. Which is still coming. Right. But I didn't get it in there in time for it to go out. Oh. So it oh. is the packet's going out. The paper yeah. didn't get in there. You're forgiven. So the packet is in the box up there now? Yeah. Or, or in the mail? Yeah. Post for those two. Okay. Um, just a quick question uh, on the cannabis. It says we closed public hearing. We approved the regulation. Just a curious on the timing that published for. Um, that's the date. So we before it's making. Before we adjourn, we might want to put an effective date in. Yes, please. Yeah. And when can we put it? When's the effective date? It should be before the end of the month. So that was your moratorium when to the end of the month. So to the date before then. Please. Do we have a notice period that we have to wait? Is there 15 days after we approve it before it can go into effect? Yeah. 15 days. So I'd make a motion that we uh, put the effective date of the cannabis uh, new regulation for October 27th. Okay. I'll second that if that seems appropriate. So the motion on the table is cannabis regulation will be in effect on October 27th. Motion by Joanna Lettis, seconded by Doug Porter. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, what's the role of White? Aye. Kim Young. Aye. Mark Black. Aye. Joanna Letta. Aye. Doug Porter. Aye. Sid. Aye. Aye. I'll abstain and that so passes. Thank you. Is there anything else?
brings us to agenda item nine. Move to adjourn. <laughs> Second. Aye. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Move to adjourn by Tim Young. Second by Mark Black. Yeah. Thank you. And discussion. Hearing none. Aye. Who the roll? White. Tim Young. Aye. Mark Black. Aye. Go right out of Aye. 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 Tim Blondhead. Aye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye